Once upon a time, in a serene monastery nestled within the tranquil mountains, there lived a young monk. He was known for his unwavering dedication to his spiritual practice. Every day, without fail, he would rise before dawn, find a quiet corner in the temple, and sit down to meditate. He diligently followed the precepts, the ethical guidelines of his tradition, and immersed himself in the study of sacred scriptures. This diligent approach to his practice filled him with a deep sense of accomplishment and self-satisfaction. However, along with his dedication came a sense of superiority. He couldn't help but look down upon his fellow monks, whom he deemed as lazy and ignorant in comparison. In his heart, he felt that his devotion and knowledge set him apart from the others, and he craved recognition for his efforts. One day an idea struck the young monk. He had heard of a famous Zen master living in a nearby temple, renowned for his wisdom and insight. Eager to showcase his knowledge and attain the master's approval, the young monk decided to visit the Zen master. With a determined stride, he set off towards the temple, carrying with him an air of self-importance. Upon arriving at the temple, he nervously approached the entrance and knocked on the massive wooden door. Moments later, the door creaked open, revealing the serene countenance of the Zen master. The Zen master greeted the young monk with a warm and knowing smile, saying, Welcome, young monk. What brings you to my humble abode? The young monk bowed deeply and replied, Master, I have come to seek your guidance. I have dedicated many years to my practice, and I have gained much knowledge from the scriptures. But I carry a burning question in my heart. What is the essence of Zen? The Zen master nodded thoughtfully and said, Ah, that is indeed a profound question. Come inside. Let us share a moment over tea. The young monk followed the Zen master into the temple and settled at a wooden table. With graceful movements, the Zen master prepared a pot of tea and poured some into a delicate porcelain cup, offering it to the young monk. The young monk accepted the cup, held it in his hands, and took a sip of the tea. As the liquid touched his tongue, a bitter taste overwhelmed his senses. Without hesitation, he declared, Master, this tea is bitter. The Zen master, still wearing his tranquil smile, responded, The bitterness you taste is not in the tea, my dear friend. It is within you. These words struck the young monk like a bolt of lightning. He was taken aback by the master's response. How could the bitterness be within him? He had come seeking wisdom and answers, not to be criticized. But the Zen master continued, his voice as calm as a still pond. You see, young one, you are full of pride and arrogance. You believe that you possess great knowledge, and you look down upon your fellow monks as if they are beneath you. You judge them harshly, yet you fail to see the darkness within yourself. You are attached to your own views and beliefs, yet you have not understood the fundamental truth. The young monk, unable to contain his anger and humiliation, reacted impulsively. He flung the porcelain cup onto the floor, shattering it into pieces, and shouted, How dare you say such things! You are a fake master, and you know nothing about Zen! You are just an old fool! The Zen master's response was nothing short of remarkable. He maintained his serene composure and replied, your anger, my dear friend, only serves to illustrate my point. You are easily provoked and agitated. You lack patience and tolerance. Your reactions are driven by your emotions and you have not mastered your own mind. In truth, you are not practicing Zen. You are practicing violence. The young monk, who had been brimming with righteous indignation just moments ago, found himself speechless. The sharpness of his words had been blunted by the master's wisdom. He felt a profound sense of shame and embarrassment for his outburst. With a heavy heart, he bowed deeply to the Zen master and said, I am deeply sorry, master. You are right, and I have been blind and foolish. Please forgive my impertinence. The Zen master's smile remained unwavering as he responded, Your humility and willingness to admit your mistakes and seek forgiveness are signs of growth. You have shown that you are open to feedback and improvement. This, my dear friend, is the practice of Zen. It is the practice of compassion. The young monk, now enlightened by the master's teachings, felt a wave of gratitude and contentment wash over him. He realized that he had encountered a true master, one who had guided him on the path of self-discovery and humility. With a heart full of gratitude, he spoke again, Thank you, master. You have taught me a great lesson. The Zen master, as always, offered his wisdom with a sense of humility, saying, You asked me, what is the essence of Zen? My answer was but one perspective. The true essence of Zen, my dear friend, is for you to discover for yourself.
and so, the young monk departed from the temple with a newfound understanding. He had learned that the essence of Zen was not merely a set of philosophical concepts or a rigid doctrine, but a way of being, a way of focusing on oneself rather than judging others, of seeking inner clarity rather than clinging to preconceived notions, and of mastering one's own mind and emotions. Zen was, above all, a journey of self-discovery and compassion. The young monk continued his practice with renewed dedication, but now with a deep sense of humility and openness to growth. He understood that true wisdom could not be measured by the accumulation of knowledge, but by the transformation of one's heart and mind. And so, he embarked on the path of Zen with a heart full of compassion, striving to understand the true essence of his own existence. In the end, he realized that the journey of self-discovery was a lifelong endeavor, one that required constant introspection, patience, and an unwavering commitment to the practice of Zen. And as he continued on this path, he found that the true essence of Zen was not a destination, but a continuous unfolding of the self, a journey of infinite depth and boundless compassion. In practicing Zen, one could indeed find the wisdom and peace that had eluded them, not by looking outward, but by turning inward, by embracing the present moment, and by cultivating a heart that was open, compassionate, and free from judgment. And so, the young monk walked this path, not as a destination, but as a way of life, a way of being that embraced the essence of Zen in every moment.